In just four days, America will usher in a new president, and the country is more DJ. divided than it has been in years, many say. As we're celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today, we ask what can be done to bridge the divide. So let's ask someone who is the perfect guest for this segment, Fox News contributor Alveda King. She is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King and the director of African American Outreach for Priests for Life. Good morning to you, Ms. King. Great to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to join you. I also have a new book. I need to put that in, oh, America good. Return to God. I want everybody to know that. I America love that. America Return to God com. But good morning to you and good, good morning, morning to, to all our friends. Why did you title it yeah. that? Well, it's time to pray. And I think that will let you know exactly what I believe we need to be doing right now. Rather than all of the controversy, we can pray and join the incoming president, our new president, Mr. Donald Trump, who is inviting leaders across America and all of the people to join in making our nation better. So if we can pray and do what Uncle ML, Martin Luther King Jr. said, learn to live together as brothers, and I add as sisters or perish as fools, we can do this. We can do it together. I then know what do you think about Congressman Lewis? He is from Atlanta, where you live and where your uncle, you know, was preaching and grew up, lived as well. I've been to his house there, and it's such a special place. So what do you, what do you make of what Congressman Lewis is doing, saying, I'm not going to go to the inauguration, saying that this president is not a legitimate president, and many other people are following suit and are not going to go to the inauguration as well? Well, I actually admire Congressman Lewis's legendary legacy of civil rights and working with my uncle, M.L., in the civil rights movement of the 20th century. And so I believe he should stay on that track, nonviolent conflict resolution. I believe that Congressman Lewis can actually help America by working with the president. So that nonviolent conflict resolution, one blood of the Bible, Jesus Christ encouraging us to be brothers and sisters and not adversarial. Congressman Lewis should be one of the best teachers of that. Now, I was born in Atlanta. Uh, on January 22nd, 1951. I'm 66 well, years old. Well, happy birthday almost. And, um, Atlanta actually does need help. So I really agree with the president. Let's fix Atlanta. Let's fix America. Uh, Mr. Trump, I voted for him. I understood what he meant when he says, let's roll up our sleeves together. And we can do that. So I want to remind Congressman Lewis of that powerful legacy. And it has to be not adversarial but to, to communicate nonviolently. And if anybody in America is fearful and tearful, let's pray together. Let's just pray. That's what my uncle would do today, my granddaddy, Daddy King, my daddy, A.D., and that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, what does today mean for you and for your family and for our country? Well, today is very important for America. This is our opportunity, another window of opportunity so that black people and white people and Gentiles and Jews, no matter what our skin color is, not colorblind. Jacob uh, had a coat of many colors for Joseph. And so we're supposed to be many colors. We can see that, but it should heal us and not divide us. I know if my uncle were here today, He'd be cheering America on, praying with America. I'll be with Bernice later on tonight, Dr. Bernice King, the CEO of the King Center, where I'm on the board. And we're going to seriously talk about racial issues. But we're brothers and sisters. We're not separate races. Dr. Alveda King, thank you so much for being with us. Great to see you this morning. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state 
sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racists, with its governor, having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. Yeah. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Come on. 